I'm Kevin. Welcome to my cave. Last time we were working on an oscillator to generate square and triangle waves. When we tried it out, it did a good job of generating square-ish and triangle-ish waves with repeatable voltage levels. But there were a couple of issues. The ramps of the triangle waves drooped because as the capacitor on our circuit charged, the current charging the capacitor fell off. And the square wave was asymmetrical because the charge current and discharge current weren't equal. Wouldn't it be nice if we could charge and discharge the capacitor with a constant current? Well, I recently dropped a short video that presented a quick and dirty constant current source, or equivalently, a constant current sink. Let's try to take advantage of that to make our triangle wave actually triangular. Here's a block diagram for the circuit we'll use. These two new symbols, which you might not have seen, are current sources, circuits that emit a constant current. We saw one way to build a constant current source in an earlier video. As before, we'll charge and discharge a capacitor and detect the peaks of our triangle wave with a Schmidt trigger circuit. In the middle of the circuit, I'll need something called an analog multiplexer, or sometimes just an analog switch. It's a device that's controlled by a logic signal and functions just like a mechanical switch. If the control signal is a logic high, then the switch connects to the upper current source and the capacitor charges at a constant rate. If the control signal is a logic low, then the switch connects to the lower current source and the capacitor discharges at a constant rate. The analog switch function is useful enough that there are a lot of ICs out there that do it. I have a few example part numbers on the screen. But I'd like to show a discrete solution for switching our currents that uses parts I already have. The simplest solution that I thought of quickly was a diode bridge. We can use a diode bridge as a current switch as long as the output voltage will never exceed the logic voltage. We have that in our circuit here. If the triangle wave has the 1 to 3 volt peaks that we used before. Let's analyze what's going on here. We'll give the circuit a 5 volt logic high as its input. We might think that the top current source would then go to a voltage one diode drop above that. But it can't go more than one diode drop above the load. The right-hand diode goes into heavy conduction at that point. So the left-hand diode is reverse biased and we can ignore it. Our source current flows into the load. We can use a similar argument for the lower pair of diodes. The left-hand diode is one diode drop below the logic signal, which is a higher voltage than the load, so the right-hand diode is reverse biased and can be ignored. And the current flows into the bottom current source from the logic input. We can use exactly the same reasoning to show that a logic low effectively connects the output to the lower current source. So the output sees either a constant current flowing in, or else a constant current flowing out, which is exactly what we want. I've gone and drawn a full schematic, which you can get from the GitHub for the series. There should be a link somewhere nearby. The two current sources are the exact circuit that I showed in the earlier video. The only little sheet that I did was that I use a single resistor instead of two to limit the current in the LEDs. We have our four diode switch sitting right here in the middle and the Schmidt trigger is completely unchanged from last time. I decided to show the output buffering that I'm using to make a line level signal in case you want to wire it into an amp or a computer and listen to the drone. Time to go down to the cave and build it. First up is to wire the two LEDs in the resistor and make sure we have the 10.3 volt levels. Hit the power, the LEDs light up, which we don't even care about, and the voltages are near enough. Now I wire in the two transistors and their emitter resistors and measure resistances to make sure I've got the biasing right. First the positive side, 3.9K across the resistor, and a random high value at the bottom of the pot that goes from 3.9K to about a meg when I turn the knob. Then 
Now over to the negative side. 3.9k from the bottom of the pot to the negative rail, and the same sort of variable value from the top of the pot when I turn the knob. So far, so good. It should be safe to power this stuff on and test the bias voltages. Power it up again, and all the voltages match what I wrote in the schematic. Now off camera, I've put the diodes in place, and my meter is monitoring the output current. I hook up a logic low and see a negative current, or switch to a logic high and see a positive one. The left-hand pot adjusts the positive current over close to the predicted range, while the right-hand pot has no effect. The right-hand pot adjusts the negative current, while the left-hand one has no effect. No problems here. I've wired it into the Schmidt trigger, and set up the scope to watch the waveforms. I can get a nearly perfect triangle wave and the corresponding square wave. By twiddling the pots, I can vary the frequency from about B0 near the bottom of the piano keyboard to nearly an octave beyond C8 up at the top. I can also adjust the duty cycle of the square wave, or the shape of the triangle wave, to get a ramp and a pulse train. The ramp has the characteristic rough, buzzy sound, and the pulse train has nearly equal values of very many harmonics. We're no longer struggling to control the wave shape and the duty cycle, but having to manage two pots to get the pitch I want is a pain, and I want to be able to produce a symmetric triangle wave with only one frequency adjustment. In other words, in the block diagram, I need to find a way to make these two currents equal. The next time I tackle the oscillator, I'll start addressing that. But in the meantime, I think I need to revisit some basic transistor theory. Until then, stay tuned, stay safe, stay healthy, stay curious, and take care of one another. Bye!